the East African community. A regional intergovernmental organization with a vision of creating a prosperous, competitive, secure, stable and politically united East Africa. The EAC has been ranked as the fastest growing regional economic bloc in Africa. The regional integration process is in full swing, with progress made in the key pillars of integration, the customs union, the common market, the monetary union and political federation. I, Honorable Dr. Peter Motuku Bathuki, do solemnly swear to discharge these functions, so help me God. It's now been one year since the Secretary General, Honorable Dr. Peter Mathuki, took the helm at the East African Community Secretariat. Under his stewardship, the EAC has made notable and significant strides. As the chair of the East African community, I proudly and warmly welcome our brothers and sisters from the Democratic Republic of Congo to the East African community. The DRC has finally reconnected formally with East Africa. We understand it's ready to play its part in this process. Tanzania say karibu sana DRC. It is our joy to welcome DRC. What better way to realize our mission than to incorporate a market of almost a hundred million people from the Democratic Republic of Congo to our vibrant community. On behalf of the people of Congo and on my own behalf to thank you for the warm welcome that you have given me. This milestone presents numerous opportunities for the people of wider East Africa to take advantage of opportunities in trade, agriculture, manufacturing, technology, natural resources, education and other sectors of mutual interest. The EAC will comprise of seven partner states, the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Republics of Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Uganda, and the United Republic of Tanzania. The bloc now spans from the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. Liberalizing trade takes center stage in the EAC integration agenda. Concerted efforts are being taken to scale up local production, enhance investment and promote economic development in the region. One of these year's key highlights was the adoption of 35% as the fourth band of the EAC Common External Tariff CET, by East African Community Ministers in charge of trade and finance in May 2022. This now implies that imports of locally available goods into the region, such as meat, furniture and textiles, will, from 1st July 2022, attract a tariff of 35%, a move set to promote local production, value addition and industrialization. We need to put a very high tariff. So whoever is bringing is discouraged to bring so that we can encourage our own people who are producing here in East Africa to sell within the market of East Africa. Further, the EAC continues to firm up its resolve to trade as a block under the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA. In February, EAC partner states adopted the EAC tariff offer for Category A products amounting to 90.2%, thereby meeting the minimum requirements for Category A to start trading on a provisional basis under AFC-FTA. He has delivered an important milestone. One is the establishment of Technical Working Group, uh, which is uh, an excellent platform of, uh, for engaging the private sector to discuss and dialogue on important issues that impact doing business uh, in the region. So that platform is working and has delivered uh, 
key uh, resorts, tangible resorts that has enabled very good uh, business involvement in the ESC. ESC has harmonized to date over 2,500 standards. In the last one year, we harmonized over 80 standards and the adoption of these standards by the partner state has been very, very great. We have, the, we have it at the percentage of 80%. In December 2021, the EAC held the 21st edition of the East African Community Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Trade Fair, popularly known as the Juakali Nguvukazi Exhibition. I'm told these trade fairs attracted about 1,500 exhibitors, amongst them women and the youth. And that is to say and to show the importance of micro and small enterprises in our economies. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has presented significant challenges for the region's recovery. The EAC unveiled a comprehensive regional COVID-19 response plan to reinforce measures to protect and prevent further spread of the virus. Some of the key initiatives under the response plan were Development of the EAC Pass, a web-based application set to strengthen verification of test results and digital vaccination certificates, thereby facilitating seamless travel across the region. The pass continues to be adopted by various EAC partner states and embraced across various border points. In partnership with Africa CDC, all EAC partner states have joined the COVAX facility the global pool procurement mechanism for COVID-19 vaccines to ensure fair and equitable access to vaccines for all participating countries. As the region continues to recover from the pandemic and build forward better, infrastructure development has remained critical in improving and expanding the existing transport and communication links. In recognition of the region's commitment to improving interconnectivity, in March 2022, the African Union's Programme for Infrastructure Development in Africa, PIDA, honored the EAC with the prestigious PIDA Quality Label PQL Award during the 7th PIDA Week held in Nairobi, Kenya. While the pandemic reversed the gains the region had registered in the tourism sector, the community, through collective and collaborative efforts, remains resilient. In an effort to bounce back to pre-pandemic levels of performance in the sector, in October 2021, the EAC partner states organized the first EAC Tourism Expo. The three-day expo attracted more than 100 exhibitors and over 40 international buyers from across the world. We have the best in terms of the wonders and attractions for tourism. The East African Community, EAC, also launched a regional and domestic tourism media campaign dubbed Tembea Nyumbani that sought to entice East Africans to travel in their specific countries and around the region in an effort to revive domestic and regional tourism across the region amid the pandemic. In adopting measures to achieve the free movement of persons, labor and services and to ensure enjoyment of the right of establishment and residence of citizens within the community, in March, the EAC established a Regional Consultative Process on Migration RCP. The platform will enable partner states to consult on migration governance issues including diaspora engagement, sustainable development and climate change. Like the rest of the world, the EAC is facing numerous environmental challenges such as climate change and pollution, destroying ecosystems and undermining the quality of life. EAC continues pushing for coordination of policies and actions for the protection of natural resources and the environment against all forms of degradation and pollution arising from developmental activities. We've had a very fruitful meeting and it's coming uh, after a long time, which just underscores the urgency of what we need to do now to catch up in terms of conserving the environment, uh, improving our resources, managing what we have, 
and ensuring that uh, it's not uh, dissipated. So The EAC recognizes the youth as critical players in furthering the regional integration agenda. Reality. To further empower the youth, the community has provided platforms for the youth to discuss issues pertinent to the regional development agenda, including unemployment and access to economic resources. We received top ranking, first ever high level support from development partners of the East African community and this has led to continued support for youth work as well after the summit. There is more cooperation between the three organs of the community, uh, the Secretariat, EALA and the court. The joint synergies will make uh, um, achieving all of the EAC integration goals more easy. EAC organs and institutions continue to collaborate with the Secretariat with the heads of organs holding periodical meetings. When we, when we joined together, we embraced a good, a, a good philosophy of teamwork, which is good. The court is happy that we are working together with Secretary General now the, the court the upper division now is in session where we, we, we requested for borrowing, he assisted us. Now the court is, is, is in session where we, we are rendered justice. Within the last one year that the SG has been in office in EAC, uh, we have experienced uh, enhanced coordination among institutions. Currently we have a, a platform where uh, all the ends of institutions are able to engage with the management and this really uh, creates efficiency in uh, service delivery because we are able to coordinate our activities and we work together for the benefit of the integration agenda. In the past one year, the revival of donor confidence and uh, uh, most of them are coming again. Uh, now because all this depends on the leadership, I think um, I needed to commend the Secretary General who coordinates all of us and who is the face of the community. We attribute this positive trend to his leadership and his team. Revitalizing relations with development partners has also been EAC's other key priority. The EAC's quest to strengthen its partnerships and strategically refocus to respond to East Africans' needs was amplified by the third East African Community Development Partners Group DPG Forum. The highly attended forum saw the partners affirm their support to key priorities under the sixth EAC development strategy. The EAC continues to accord special importance to cooperation with international organizations and development partners. Dr. Mathuki, in his quest to strengthen multilateralism, led delegations to attend various multilateral forums. The EAC utilized the forums to push the agendas of promoting peace and security, climate change, environmental conservation and adoption of a regional COVID-19 harmonized approach, among others. Dr. Peter Masuki has energized the EAC integration process with a policy shift towards economic and people-oriented integration. Due to his previous position, he is well connected with the private sector and enjoys high recognition and approval among East African business leaders and political leaders alike. He has been able to bring back a trade for good image of a community our integration process can now be seen. In ensuring the community's projects and programs are effectively implemented, the EAC continues to enhance the capacity of its organs and institutions. As new members of staff were welcomed, the EAC also bid farewell to others who have been instrumental in building the community. The EAC belongs to all of us, and we have a duty to ensure a prosperous region.